Hello and welcome to another Life Rooms chat with Sefton Sexual Health. Uh, my name's Ben, I'm a learning facilitator with the Life Rooms and I'm delighted today to be joined by Trish. Trish, if you could introduce yourself. Thanks Ben. My name's Trish Delves and I'm a Health Promotion Officer for Sefton Sexual Health Service. My role entails working with um, various groups throughout the Borough of Sefton, um, educating, supporting and giving advice and information regarding uh, sexual health and relationship needs. That's brilliant, thanks Trish. And just to let you know, this is one of seven videos that we're doing with the theme being raising awareness for people with learning disabilities. And today we're talking about sexual health. Um, so Trish, thank you for joining us uh, once again. Um, could, you, could you tell us about your service, what it actually does? Right, so Sefton Sexual Health, um, we have a number of clinics throughout the Sefton Borough. Um, and what we do is we provide a clinical service for everybody um, right across uh, the borough of Sefton and we provide um, advice and information around um, contraception, STI testing, lots of sexual health needs. Um, we are um, a five day service currently and what happens when people come to our service they often come because they need some uh, contraception or they might have think that they've put themselves at risk of a sexually transmitted infection so we can provide testing and then we can provide treatment depending on what the outcome of the result is we also have a um, clinical outreach team so that's where we have nurses who if for some reason somebody can't come into the service through accessibility reasons or there's a vulnerability, a vulnerable need, we can actually go out to their homes and provide the same service um, with slightly, some slight restrictions, um, things like fitting coils and that kind of thing, but that can be provided in their own setting if needs be. Uh, we also have a psychosexual therapy um, service as well which is fantastic that we are able to provide that and that supports people who um, are perhaps um, in a sexual relationship or not necessarily, but they are experiencing difficulties in terms of the um, physical requirements when it comes to um, being sexually active. So we can support them through that as well. And we also have our health promotion team. That's brilliant, yeah. yeah. You do an awful lot actually. There's a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise. Um, so I guess, because we're raising awareness for people with learning disabilities, what, what, sort, of, what sort of barriers would, would prevent them perhaps from accessing a service like yourself, do you think? I think the barriers are probably perception. Um, for a long time, people with learning difficulties were, it was assumed that they um, weren't sexually active, that they didn't have sexual needs, that they didn't want to explore their sexuality. And unfortunately, that's really set them back. Um, they do have rights. Um, and that's certainly something as a service that we want to be able to support. So in terms of accessibility barriers, we will have addressed all of them, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they, f they feel that it's a service that they are able to access um, for lots of other social barriers. Um, so part of being able to do the work that we do within the health promotion team and working with yourselves at Life Rooms is about exploring that and, you know, passing that information on and letting people know that actually you do have the right to explore a relationship, you do have a right to explore your sexuality and the support is there. Um, so Trish, is, is it a case do you think sometimes that it's changing the perception of, of families and carers of people with learning disabilities that they, they can have you know, a sexual life and relationship. Absolutely, and it's not an intentional um, suppression that they're putting upon um, the people that they're supporting with a learning difficulty. It's by no means, that, you know, an intention. A lot of it's down to fear. Um, and even working with young people, there's still this slight belief that if you talk about it, then you are going to encourage inappropriate behaviour. And that is actually what we're trying to do and a lot of organisations are doing throughout the world now is trying to actually encourage the talk so it reduces the vulnerability um, and it's definitely something that we need families to be on board with so if we're going to support somebody to explore their sexuality explore a relationship a romantic um, or an intimate relationship they need to have all of those um, people around them to support them because we need to have the messages reinforced. Opportunities to talk about things need to be presented. 
Um, it could be just watching a television programme. You know, soap operas are fantastic. Yeah. There's lots of storylines that when I'm working with um, groups of people with learning difficulties, they revert to the storylines. So we get to talk about them, ask what they think is going on. And we can use that as part of education as well. No, that's brilliant. And it, it kind of takes away the mystery, doesn't it? Which yes. Is a yes. problem in itself, isn't it? Yes. There is still a bit of taboo when it comes to sex. And that's really, really unfortunate because we now live in a world, especially in the digital world, where we are exposed to sexualized messages on an almost daily basis. And unless we start looking at them in those messages in a critical way and understanding that there are ways that we can understand those sexual messages and keep ourselves safe, then we're completely missing an opportunity to reduce exploitation and abuse, Definitely. that kind of thing. No, definitely. Um, I just want to go back to a word you mentioned uh, before, education, I yeah. think you might have said. So what, what types of things might be within that education? Right, so um, there's, there's, when people think about sex and sexual health, people tend to think contraception, condoms, STIs, the risk side of things. Um, and we definitely need to address them. But also we need to talk about public and private places, um, appropriate behaviour, places to meet people, um, is, what is a healthy relationship, what's an unhealthy relationship, mm. understanding consent, um, understanding sexuality and how that feels, mm. um, even understanding how your body works. That's really, really important because if we don't understand how our body actually works and how we might react to something that arouses us or somebody who makes us feel excited, understanding what those feelings are are really important as well. So that's all part of um, the education that we mm -hmm. hope to provide. Um, consent, I think, yes. is, is, is a big one amongst that. Well, it, it's all, you know, really, really important, isn't it? But yes. I, I just wanted, for the benefit of our, of our viewers, if, if that's okay for you to talk about consent, what that actually means. Yes, yeah, so um, a lot of people fear the word consent because it does have um, legal connotations, and that's absolutely right. It comes um, particularly from the Sexual Offences Act 2003, and it's about understanding what is okay and isn't okay with regards to sexual behaviour. So, as part of our education, we, we try to explore understanding what consent means in a real life situation. Because it's one thing to know a legal definition, it's another thing to actually put that into play. So an example of how we would explore that is by having scenarios. So we will create scenarios where consent is clearly present and then scenarios where it isn't. And we'll go through those scenarios and help people understand what's going on here. But the other side of that is then being able to actually say no to something that they don't want to happen. And that in itself is a skill. Um, often because we like somebody, we have a close relationship with somebody, mm -hmm. people will struggle with that saying no. And I think that applies to anyone, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. um, that, that ability to be assertive, is it, you're right, is a skill, isn't it? It and, is, yeah. You know, empowering people, I suppose, with, yep. with that ability. Absolutely. And the important part, the important thing to be aware of as well when it comes to consent, that if something should happen um, that goes against what the person wants, it's not something that they should feel that th they should have dealt with it differently. It's very easy to sit here and say, it's about saying no, it's about having those skills. But in actual fact, they could end up in a situation where that's a very, very difficult situation. So it's about knowing that if something happens, it was the wrong thing, they're not at fault, and somebody can do something about it to help and support them. Um, and that's a really important message that people need to be aware of. And when we're talking about that, we're helping to reduce the risk of abuse and exploitation, because people with learning difficulties are quite vulnerable to that, um, sometimes more so than the, the greater population. So part of those, um, you know, talking about sex and relationships is about making them aware that some things aren't okay, but there's people there to help them and support them. No, that's brilliant. Um, and I think assertiveness is, is definitely, it, it's, it's a skill and it, it's part of your armoury, isn't it, when you're going out uh, into the world and, yeah. and being able to interact with people. And yeah, definitely, definitely. And being able to practise that is really important in a safe, um, in a safe situation. 
you know, that's really good. One of the um, activities that we do is literally throwing a ball back and forward and, um, you know, saying, no, I don't want it and throwing it back. So we talk to people about using a, a big voice, um, how they um, stand, you know, how they stand, how they hold themselves. It's all about building up confidence physically and then we can work on the internal confidence as well. Is it possible to support somebody um, to enjoy a, a sort of a healthy sexual relationship, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, once we've built the foundations of understanding their own body, understanding what's safe and unsafe, understanding what a healthy relationship is, um, understanding consent, they're really, really important foundations. What we then should be able to go on to is talking about pleasure and um, how to enjoy sex and how to ask for th the kind of things that you want. And that's all part of having a healthy relationship. It's about respect, it's about trust. And once somebody feels that they have that in a relationship, they should feel empowered to be able to talk more intimately about what it is that they want. Um, I think all too often people shy away about actually talking about pleasure. And, but it's actually a really, really fundamental um, topic of discussion. It's not something that everybody will feel confident and comfortable with discussing, but there are, again, places, um, people who will be able to support people to actually talk about how they would like their sex life to be explored, really. Um, and I think, again, it's been shrouded in taboo for such a long time that we should just normalise it. We talk about it being safe, we talk about our, ourselves being healthy, so that should be the next facet of it. What do we enjoy? And if we know what we enjoy, then we know what we don't enjoy. And then we know what to say, you know, how to communicate. We're I'm not into this, I'm not comfortable. So that's a big important part of it as well. Definitely. I think as well, like, um, you know, sex is not the be all and end all for some people as well, is it? There are, other forms of, of being close to people? Yes, yeah, definitely. There's other ways of being intimate. So it could be um, touching, stroking, kissing, um, you, you know, brushing somebody's hair, holding hands. It, anything like that is all part of intimacy. Um, it's not necessarily about having penetrative sex, if you like, or oral sex, that kind of thing. There are definitely other ways that you can enjoy each other and enjoy each other's body. And, and feeling close to somebody. Definitely. I think um, in another video that we're doing um, with a chap called Mark, uh, we'll be talking a lot more about relationships, won't we? Yes. Um, so we'll look forward to that. Uh, but I, I think, uh, you know, unless there's, there's anything else that we haven't covered um, to do with, you know, sexual health, yeah. uh, I, th I think we'll, we'll leave it there. Okay, brilliant. Thank um, you. No, thank you, Trish. It, it's been a real pleasure having you on um, and I look forward to, uh, to seeing you again. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank you, Trish. And, and thank you all for watching. Uh, please look out on our YouTube page for more Life Rooms videos. And as I say, this is part of a series of learning disabilities videos as well. Thank you.